Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the tank review for the Chinese tier 10 premium medium tank, the 121B. Now this is a tank you can get for 450,000 free XP, which on playing it so far, it's a pretty solid tank. It's, it's pretty nice, it's been pretty fun to play. It's got a very good gun, it's really accurate. It's got pretty decent DPM. The armor's also okay, it can bounce a fair few shots. It does have some weak spots like next to the gun and stuff, but you'll see that in the armor viewer. It's also pretty sluggish up to its top speed of 52, which, yeah, it can be a little bit annoying when you need to speed up to get keep up with other medium tanks at the tier, but, you know, you take that in penalty for a really good gun and some decent armor. So in terms of the stats, you've got 261 penetration on the APCR, 330 on the heat, and 105 on the HE. Now, that 105 on the heat, HE sorry, is really good that means you can pen stuff like cgc's guise or gw 100s quite easily whereas you're struggling in other tanks that have only got 60 pen on the he which is about standard that he round is really good on the apcr round that is a really nice penetration it's pretty standard for the tier same as the 330 heat pen that's a change from pc by the way if you were looking at pc stats it's got 350 on pc but i mean 330 heat pen is is enough to go through everything you'll ever meet anyway so that's fine in terms of the velocity, it's got 1400 meters a second on the APDS or the APCR, which is really good because that means you won't have to worry about leading shots as much with it. On the heat rounds, you've got 1100 meters a second, which is again really good for a heat round. Generally, on heat rounds, they tend to be a thousand meters a second or less, so that's really nice to have. And on the HE, you've only got 732 shell velocity, which is really bad. So if you switch to HE, bear that in mind that you're going to have to lead the shots even more than the other two rounds. So please bear that in mind. You've got 1950 hit points, which is pretty standard for a tier 10 medium. That's really nice. You can bounce, where well, you can take quite a few shots before you go down, so that's okay. Now it's got 52 kilometers an hour top speed. I'm not sure what's going on with the Tankopedia version of this tank because some of the stats are wrong on the tankopedia it's actually different which is what i'm going to go through with you with the different bits here so it says it's got 50 km an hour top speed it's actually wrong it's got 52 kilometers an hour top speed and it says that in the garage so these are the some of the right stats some of some of the stats are perfectly fine the same and some of them aren't so it's got actually got a 52 km an hour top speed and you do feel sluggish you will struggle up to that trust me it, it does just feel that little bit sluggish 400 meters View range is really good. That's what you want on a tier 10 medium. More, 400 meters or more is fantastic to have. You won't struggle to outspot things or get outspotted yourself. That's that's great. 26% concealment is pretty nice for a medium tank. That means that you aren't going to get... Inst it's, it's not like you're going to be a waffly wonder where you're just instantly spotted every single time you get... You know, a tank comes anywhere within 500 meters of you. So that's pretty nice to have. Especially you can buff it up with stuff like camouflage expertise... But the tank's a bit more of a brawler, so you you don't really want to be doing that. You want to buff another stats more. So this is where the, some of the stats change a little bit. And these are clearly stats before they changed it a little bit. Because here is 6.45 rounds a minute, right? That's different. The actual rate of fire for this tank is definitely better now for that. It's 6.74 rounds a minute, which is a base reload of 8.9 seconds. Which means when you're fully pimped out, you can get it down to six and a half second reload, which is very, very nice. It's 0.2 slower than something like the 50, the CS63, which just came out. And it's it's just a, it's got pretty decent DPM, and that means you can actually fight back quite well. And it's actually really nice just to have. You can get it down, if you activate food, to 6.2 seconds, and it's great. I mean, you can also sort of keep up with the more Soviet medium tanks that you'll see. And you're also around the same DPM as your Tech Tree counterpart, the 121, which has a bigger gun with the 122 and 440, for example. So that's a nice change. I'm happy that they did this rather than have the original rate of fire, which is this 9.3 second base reload here. Yeah. So it's got 2.2 aim time, which is really nice. You get zoomed in onto the target pretty quickly. That's great to have. You've got 0.33 accuracy, which you can get down to about 0.24. And that means you are really accurate. And that is great to have. That means you don't really have necessarily have to run vert stabs unless you want to go really overkill on the accuracy. So that's great. you got 50. Ammo capacity is 50, apparently. I think it's actually more than that. 
I want to say. It says 80 here on the news website. So, I mean, if you go with this and it's 80, you aren't going to struggle. I actually think it is 50. So, it's different on there as well. With 50, I mean, you're not really going to run out of rounds. I have had a game where I run out of APCR, but you get, you've got a lot of carry potential with this, which is nice. It's not limited by the rounds, say, like a M48 120mm or a T95 E6, which only has a certain capacity with like 35, where you're going to run out of rounds very quickly and you're going to get left in the lurch with it a bit. So you've got 5 degrees of gun depression, which is very Soviet. I kind of wish it had like a degree or two more. But that's just the way it is. It's a very Soviet tank, right? It's a Chinese knockoff of the Soviet mediums. So, yeah, I'm not a big fan of 5 degrees, but it, it worked out all right for the most part. 240 millimeters of armor on the turret front, 160 on the side, 60 millimeters on the rear. Well, in terms of this turret, there's a weak spot right next to the gun here on the left and the right. So don't sit still in front of tanks thinking you're impenetrable like a Soviet medium. You can get penned. This is your own gun with 261 APCR pen looking at you flat, right? So right next to the gun, you've got a 50 to 60% chance here of penetrating your own tank. And it's the same here, look. If they shoot you to the left and the right of the gun at the lower part, they, they can just pen it. And there's other parts as well that they can pen. So don't be surprised sometimes if people do catch the front of your turret and pen it. That can be an irritating thing. And yeah, just be aware when you are shooting at these things, you can do that. And I mean, if you switch to heat, which is 330, this is 350. Look at that. Would you butter it up. Even with 330, you're going to be destroying that. So the Capolas are also a weak spot, which is fine, but they're also very tough to hit. So there's a lot of times you will shoot these and just do viewport damage. So yeah, you keep that in mind. The tank can side scrape, which is nice. It's got 80 millimeters of side armor, but it does have little bits here, like this little spot here next to the tracks. If you overexpose a little bit too much, randomly you can just pen it because reasons. And sometimes you'll get shots that get caught in the turret ring here as well. So you just be aware of that when you are side scraping. That sometimes you can catch shots and don't think it's a load of crap because they pend you. There's just positions that they can. But it can, you know, Mr. Side Scrape will be happy because you can side scrape with it. The upper plate is also very nice. Look at that effective. It's 230, it's 130, sorry, raw armor. And when you're angling it and stuff, you're getting it up to 230, 240 millimeters effective. Tier 8s are going to struggle with this, which is nice. A lot of tier 9s won't. Some of the tier 9 medium tanks might if you're angling, which is pretty good. And if you're angling too much, obviously the side is something they could shoot. But say you're pulling back around a corner and, they, and say that's the corner here. And they just miss your track and hit this upper plate. They could ricochet, and if they hit the lower plate, they're definitely going to ricochet. I've, you'll see it in the replays. There's quite a few shots that do bounce that you sit there going, oh, I bounced that. Nice! You know, the armor's pretty nice. You can just ricochet shots, and that's a really good feature for the tank. So, yeah, it's got 42 degrees a second traverse speed on the turret with 50 degrees on the tracks. Now... The traverse speed isn't bad by any any stretch, right, on either. But combined, it can leave you a little bit annoyed when you sort of are locked onto someone and you try and fire, but you turn the tracks at the wrong moment and your turret doesn't keep up with the tracks, therefore your gun snaps off of them. That can happen. That can be annoying. That's just something to be aware of, okay? If you're shooting at someone, try not to turn your tracks and your turret. Engine power is 580 with 14.5 horsepower per ton, like I say, it is quite sluggish getting up to the 52 km an hour top speed. Ignore that. The 52 km an hour top speed it can be a little bit sluggish off the mark. It's not terrible by any stretch, but it definitely does feel that little bit sluggish. 20 km an hour reverse speed is really nice. You get back around corners and stuff really quickly. That's great to have. It's faster than something like the C63 again, which just came out recently, which has got 15. You feel how slow that is. This with 20 km an hour is fine. It's got a 12% fire chance, but it's Chinese, right? It does get set on fire with fuel, frontal fuel tanks. That can happen, so be aware. The firefighting, fire prevention skill might be useful in this. But, yeah, on the whole, this tank is just generally quite solid. And it was pretty fun to play. It's not a, ter it's not a terrible tank, but it's not a brilliant tank. It, you know, it's in that middle ground, which is probably good, right? That's, that's a good thing, I'd say. 
you know, it's, it's not the next T22 medium at all. That's that's the good thing. So, as always, everybody, I'm going to send you over to the garage bit where you can see the crew let, set up everything, all the effective values from the skills and stuff, and then you'll get to see the replays. So, I'll see you over there. So, here we are in the garage with the 121B. And yeah, it's a very good looking tank. It's a Soviet ripoff Chinese tank, so, you know, it looks very Soviet y. But it's Chinese. And it's it's also very it just looks nice. Unfortunately, there's no skin to come with this tank, like they normally is with a lot of the tier tens. I think they said that they were going to try and get skins on all the new tanks coming out, but unfortunately there isn't one. So you've just got normal camo, and it's perfect for googly eyes. So you know. So let's look into what the stats are with the crew I've got in. So with the gun, I've got it about down to naught point. 24 accuracy and 8.32 rate of fire. Now the rate of fire means that with the crew skills and the modules and stuff, I actually have a six and a half second base reload. And if you pump it up with food, like you press B to activate it in the game, the reload is actually like 6.2 seconds, which is very nice. It's a very nice reload. It's it's pretty solid. Like I say, the the tank is just fairly solid all round. It's not nothing to shout about, but it's decent, you know. It's not bad. It's not like a T22 medium, even after its buff, which is still bad. We've got 466 meters view range, which is nice, fully pumped up. But I don't that that'll be actually more because vents adds to that too. But the effective values don't actually go up with vents or food. They don't. It just doesn't add to it. So that'll actually be higher. Probably you're looking around 470 plus, which is lovely it means you're going to be out able to outspot tanks great so i run rammer vents and optics now i don't run vert stabs you might be going not running a vert stab on a tier 10 medium well with the 0.24 accuracy vert stabs will make that better sure but it's a bit overkill because the gun's already ridiculously accurate and it hits most of the shots you're ever going to fire even on the move because 6.0 accuracy and its ridiculousness so Vert stabs aren't really needed. You can run vents instead and buff everything else about the tanks to make your aim time ever so slightly better, make your deep aim ever, ever so slightly better, you know, make the gun handling ever so slightly better. View range, you know, so running the vents with the optics to buff your view range up as much as possible and just everything else about the tank with the rammer. That's why I run it. I wouldn't run the vert, well, I say I wouldn't run. You can run the vert stabs if you feel that you're not happy with the gun. But like I say, it tends to hit most shots anyway, so you could probably run this anyway. And like I say, with vert stabs, I tend to run them on tanks that have 0.35 base accuracy or higher, because you don't get below that 0.25 accuracy. And when you're below that 0.25 accuracy anymore, it just seems to be a little bit overkill, to be perfectly honest. So that's why I run that setup I do. In terms of the crew, now the crew has got one thing different that I've literally just plucked a crew out of somewhere and put it in. I think this is, this might be my light tank crew. I can't remember. But I've gone born leader, rapid loading, trap mechanic, camouflage expertise, situational awareness, six sense, steady aim, run and gun, and snapshot. Now, this is, this is kind of a brawler. So... You don't really need camouflage expertise. Like I say, this is just because I don't want to respec a crew for it. It's like the 121. It will burn. Okay, it's got frontal fuel tanks. It's just like Soviet tanks as well. Chinese tanks, they like to burn. They do burn, right? And running fire prevention or firefighting, one of the two, like I say, that's always your preference. I like to run firefighting for if I do get set on fire, it gets put out quicker. But then I also get the fire prevention. But you're taking your chance with RNG with fire prevent prevention, whether you're going to not get set on fire, you know. It, and then if you do get set on fire, you just burn for quite a while. So that it, it's purely your choice. Like, that's that's my reasoning for it. But, yeah. So you're probably better to run one of the fire prevention or firefighting skills there. Or if you're unhappy with the turret rotation. Because the turret rotation is great, right? But I think it turns slightly slower than the track so if you want to make it 10% quicker you could run rapid aim make your turret turn faster you know or you've got iron mace for having apcr standard to make your pen better on the apcr over distance 
but really the firefighting is more useful generally to me personally that's what i think i'd either run that one or that one for me but they're the cruise skills i run on this tank that's the equipment i run on it i also run full prem consumables because you want those reusable consumables you, you just do you want to be able to reuse your stuff and i run food now obviously if you run a fire extinguisher you might not want to run fire prevention or you know i mean to be fair with the firefighter you firefighting or fire prevention you could run the fire extinguisher and just basically never get set on fire that's the way you could run it right and in terms of ammo loadout that's the other one I run 26 APCR, 20 heat, and 4 HE. Now, you probably don't need that many heat, to be honest, but I, it's just when I get this many rounds in a tank like that, I do tend to run that many of each, pretty much. It's just sort of my go to numbers. Now, people will be annoyed because it's not like 25, 20, and 5, right? But I'm weird, alright? That's just the way I work. <laughs> so, as always, everybody. I'll let you go watch the replays and you'll be able to make your mind up off of watching those. You might be going, this guy's talking a load of rubbish. This tank looks incredible. Or you might be going, oh, you're just talking rubbish. The tank was terrible. I don't want to play this tank. So I'll let you make your mind up on those. So here we are in the replays with the 121B. And the first game we've got is in Himmelsdorf. And basically I've got three replays for you. There's this one on Himmelsdorf. There's going to be one on Highway at the end. And the one in the middle is more of a, kind of shows off what the tank can do generally in a normal-ish game. Because these two, the first and the last result are pretty damn decent results. So I kind of want to have a game there. I mean, the middle game isn't bad by any stretch. It's just one of those games where you do about 5k damage. And it kind of shows what you can do in a sort of a more rushed situation. And there's also little instances where you don't get to see some of the strength of the tank as well. In these two replays, like the armour, pretty much. So we're on Himmelsdorf and we haven't gone to the hill. And I haven't gone to the hill because you know, I didn't want to spend ages going up the hill and finding that there might not be anything up there. But I mean, but there could be because it's just where Himmelsdorf is. I've come to the train tracks because I don't go to the train tracks if I go, if I'm in the southern spawn, their spawn. I only come to it if I'm on this side. And that's because obviously you can use positions like this. I only have five degrees of gun depression. And I kind of, if I, if I have ten degrees of gun depression, right, I'm more likely to go to the hill. Or eight degrees, for instance, because I can use any ridge line that's up there. Whereas when I've got five degrees, like on this tank, I'm more likely to take myself to the areas where it's just flat ground, like down below on Himmelsdorf here, because that means I never have to worry about my gun depression. Which you know, at five degrees isn't the best. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of five degrees of gun depression, and when it comes to having to fight on ridge lines, I can just get fr really frustrated. So you come to the train tracks because it's all flat ground. And we're getting some nice shots into these people that have gone to the train track. So we've got some nice shots into the T10 there to try and help our CS63 as he was YOLOing him. And now we've got the 60 TP that's down there. And we're just using the decent DPM, the good accuracy of the gun, to feather shots straight into his lower plate. I say that as we bounce. Probably, if I, I mean, to be fair, it's because I just didn't let the gun aim all the way in then. And he turns again, unluckily, just as we go to fire at his lower plates. We end up tracking him, which means we're getting assistance, which isn't too bad. But he's turned his turret to follow this light tank, which is just perfect for us. Because that means we're actually getting shots into the back of his turret. Kind of hoping that I'll pop his turret here. Because obviously his ammo racks are in the back of his turret. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And now he's gone. There is the medium tank on their G line. And then there's the medium tank down south. Most of the tanks are either on our D-line or on the hill. So I'm wary of the people on the hill. I'm looking for a shot into the I-7. We get one into his lower plate, which is nice. But this VK is insistent on face-hugging him, which is unfortunate. We get a nice shot into the I-7's cupola there. And we do take a hit from the Centurion Action 10. Now, he's actually got a better reload than us, just. So he ends up outdoing us there. And petting us. And we're going to try and back up, see if we can get a shot into him. We get a nice shot into his side. And again, I'm just moving in. And I'm thinking now, I want to be on the other side. So I'm going to try and shut down this Sentax, which we do. And I, yeah, I kind of want to be on the other building over here. So I get better shots at the guys up on the hill without much retaliation to myself. We get a nice shot snapped into the lower plate of the T95E6. And this is what I'm saying about how good the gun handling is. You don't really particularly need the vert stab. So we hit him again then, but unfortunately the shot went low and hit his tracks. Because the, the gun is already accurate enough without the vert stabs. You, they're sort of, you just want the vents to be able to buff everything else up. 
So we kind of half side scrape that 705. Fortunately enough for us, he ends up ricocheting off our turret, which is nice, obviously. Um, then we're going to move in on this IS-7. Now, the IS-7 is being covered by our dead VK friend, which is unfortunate for us. And I didn't quite... I was so focused on that IS-7 that I didn't notice the 705 that actually pulled out on me, which was bad play there, which means I end up eating a shot. But now, this guy is going to pay for it. I repair my fuel tanks because I don't want to get set on fire. And we're just going to keep this guy pinned in place because we've got enough DPM to do that. And he's just going to be stuck there now. And hopefully we'll be able to shut him down. Unfortunately, we end up low rolling twice, which means he's only on 139 health. But I've only got heat left. I've actually burnt through all of my APCR, which means going through this I-7's upper plate at that angle is incredibly easy. And we go straight through it with our 330 pen. And I, get, I want to put some shots into this guy, but he's backed himself into an awkward corner. I could go behind and shoot through the window, which is kind of what I'm thinking of. But there's a TD near our medium tank, and if he poked round, it's 705A, he'd end up killing me. So I don't want to do that. So I end up getting a nice shot into the lower plate of this IS-7. I'm thinking, well, my reload's good enough that I could probably do it again without taking a shot. So we get one straight through his upper plate, like I say, because we've only got heat left, which makes it easy. The medium tank on my left is starting to maraud through, and I'm thinking, he's not going to charge and do that and he does i end up snapping a shot in ricocheting unfortunately off the guy and this is what i'm saying about those polish mediums right that guy doesn't have any armor but we actually just ricocheted just off his turret in a snapshot doesn't have armor but it's got those sort of angles that you can just ricochet we end up getting a nice auto aim shot through the upper plate the i7 a minute ago as well he put a shot into me but i knew i could survive it which is why i drove out and did it and i had friends and now there's only one tank left, and it's this 268 version 5. Now, I know that this 268 version 5 is going to kill either me or the E50, so I'm going to try and yellow out in front of him and get an auto aim shot in. Because if I die there, the E50 is going to shut him down, and if the E50 took the shot, I was going to kill the 268. But unfortunately, we ended up auto aiming the shot into the E50, and the E50 shut him down. So, finish that game with one kill, 7.8k damage, 1700 assistance, ace tanker. Confederate, high caliber, 1620 base XP, S just a decent game for the tank and it, it kind of showed what it could do on the flat ground, it kind of showed the armor at points as well which was quite nice, obviously being slightly better than the 1-2-1, one, one. showed the nice gun handling when you're snippety sniping shots on the move and hitting cupolas and stuff what you want and yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's a pretty solid tank, generally. It's not. It's nothing to shout about. It's not like screaming from the hilltops, everybody must buy this tank like a Chi Lin. But it's just, a, it's just a good, solid tank. And this game on Kaunas is a very quick round and kind of shows off what the tank can do in, a sort, in these sorts of quick situations and what it wants to be doing. So... We've come to this little rock here. We get a nice shot into that T-54. Look, the accuracy there. We have very little of that guy. And actually, we aimed that one a little bit poorly. We aimed that straight at the ridge line, like where you see where I'm aiming now. And RNG took the wheel and slapped it straight into his upper plate, which is nice. Unfortunately, we rolled for 350, but that's because damage roll changes are terrible. And I'm now looking at the enemy team going, hmm, we're not spotting anything. Our team's really... Like, those two medium tanks all over there have pushed in really aggressively. So, I'm considering if there's anything that could be able to shoot me if I'm in this really aggressive position. Now, they've pushed out to try and attack our two guys, and that means they're actually pushing out in front of all of our guns. I'm slightly concerned here that, obviously, now I'm in the open, so I'm trying to see if I can get some shots into these guys as I pull back. And I end up ricocheting off the T-95 E6 as Capola. Now, obviously, and look at that shot into the E4 as Capola. That is filthy. That's just how good the accuracy is on this gun. Yeah, the T95 V6 is Capola is like 240mm effective, which means it's it's not obviously, it's a big fat weak spot to hit, but it's, it can, you can ricochet shots off it, which can be very irritating. Now we've got this Waffle E100 pulling out, and I'm thinking perfect chance to slap some Waffle with the HEs. And I was thinking, oh, he's not going to charge me, is he? We've got, I've got friends, and it's like, oh wait, no, actually, I'm kind of in the open by myself. Now the good upper plate armor there, well angled, means that he bounces and I'm just slapping this guy up with the HE look at the rolls this is juicy and I'm confident with this little ridge in front of me that I can just ricochet his shots as he fires at me while I'm pulled down which is what I'm doing and I'm gonna hopefully finish him off but I can't quite get there he fires his last shot there 
while he's pulling back. I try and snap the shot into his turret. Unfortunately, it misses. But the shell's going quickly enough, so we're just going to YOLO across and try and get a shot into him. Hopefully, we'll get to finish him off. But the Ramatop Panzer Vagon, unfortunately, finished him off himself. You see, when you activate food and boost the food, it's a 6.2 second reload on this tank, which is really nice. Um, that means you can do a heck of a lot. Now, we're coming up to this Badger, and this Badger, obviously, is, is a, a pretty nasty tank to face when he's sitting there, kind of all down, sat in front of you, because it's a very solid tank. We get a nice shot into the side of that Jagdpanzer E100, and then the back of the 704 as well, just leaving this guy here, because he's not attacking us. And I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to track this guy, and then go around him. But, T-54 gets spotted directly behind him as I go think I'm going to go do it, and I'm like, no, you know what, actually, I'm not going to do that. Because that T-54 might hurt us a wee bit. So I end up pulling back. The 50 YOLO's over and into the Badger. Turns him round. I managed to track him. Then the 50 finishes him off. And here we're going to see a bit of bad RNG. Because on the move, we hit the upper plate of the T-54 with our 260-odd pen. Ricochet. We try and shoot the drive wheel of the T-54. Hit the lower plate. Ricochet. RNG sometimes. It loves it. We've shut down that T-54, and now we're going to hopefully maybe get a shot into this 704, but unfortunately he dies to the Panzerwagen, but it was, a, it was a quick game, and a nice game for the 121B there, it kind of showed off what it can do, we got one kill, 5.1k damage, 265 assistance, it was Confederate, first class, 1300 base XP, it was sort of your more average game where the tank can sort of do well. And we're on to the last replay, and the last replay, we're on highway. And we're in the good spawn for Highway. This is the spawn I much prefer. And that's because you can get some ridiculous assistant on it. And, spoilers, it's probably what's going to happen in this game. So, we're going to go to the normal position around C2 in the bushes. Where I can sort of hide and if I get spotted, pull back behind the ridge lines in case they YOLO across the open ditch in front well I say the open ditch the little ravine would you call it not too sure in front of us anyway and we're going to just pull into a bush and then get crashed into by the chisel unfortunately I, I drove in front of him and yeah this bush is where I want to be but nothing's getting spotted and I'm sitting here thinking surely something would have been spotted by now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and pop a blind shot because I'm thinking, you know, if things camp over there, they tend to camp around those bushes there. And I've had much success in the past by just popping blind shots. I mean, you don't pen the shots you don't take, right? Yeah. So, blind shots always worthy. But we've got a nice gun line. And there's nothing spotted. There's nothing in these ditches. So I'm thinking, you know what, screw it. I'm going to charge and I'm going to see if I can pump up some good assisted here. And um, you never want to stop in the middle of this field. Never. Don't stop in this field. Just keep driving. So I'm driving to the... My aim is usually this ridge line here in front of me because I can actually get hauled down and stay safe from anything on the ridge lines above me from here. And that's what I'm doing with this... This guy here, this 260. Um, he, he's getting farmed up. Look, that, just like that. 1,600 assistance. We got two nice shots into him. We got some good spotting into him. Juicy. And now this 140 is being spotted up again. He's starting to get peppered. Rook's 2k spotting now. <clears throat> and we're getting all the spotting on this guy. Which is why this push is always a juicy, juicy push to do. And then he gets one shot by a GW Tiger. Oh my god. We're up to 3.5k assistance. We end up taking a hit in the face from the STRV there. We're going to aim a shot at the back of this I-7's turret, which is a 50-50 pen. We get a nice roll there, 401. That's a high roll. That's not something you get all that often these days. And we ended up spotting in a mill as well up here with another TD. And we're starting to get more assist on them guys. We're up to 4.5k damage, which is juicy. And I just wanted to spot these guys up. So you see, we spot the STRV. He gets blacked by a Jagdpanzer, loses most of his health. Now... I kind of come this way, which is dangerous because obviously there's a two six, yeah, two six eight version five behind us, which he could have popped out and shot me in the back, which wouldn't have been good. But fortunately enough, I got round and managed to finish off the Emil because I saw the Emil Yolo in, and I was like, well, I'm not going to stay in the low ground. I know he's got bad elevation, therefore he's going to have to look up at me. Now, I could finish that two six eight. I pop a shot at his upper plate on angle, <coughs> sorry, angled up, 
And unfortunately, we ricochet, which means we take a big slap from that 268, which is really unfortunate and kind of annoying. It's annoying that that bounce, really. But that's APCR. Sometimes it just hits an angle and it'll ricochet because of normalization. And now he's gone. It's time. We're just going to charge across to this ridge line in front of me over here so I can stay hauled down from people like the UDES over there and the IS-7. And I haven't quite realized yet. There's a TD on my left. And... That's dangerous, but fortunately enough for me, he's not looking at me. So what I'm going to do is actually going to drop a shot into his tracks. I aim straight for the drive wheel there, and we've got him tracked, which means we're getting assistance. And we're just going to keep him perma-track now. Hopefully our guys will finish him off so I get some more assistance, which they do. And he's gone. So now I'm thinking, right, what's in front of us? What can we shoot? Well, they're all preoccupied on our right, so I'm just going to pop a shot into the piggy because you've got to shoot the piggy, right? And I'm thinking, do I want to pop up and shoot him again while these guys are starting to look at us? Because we've got a 277 and an IS-7 that started to look this way. And I'm thinking, uh, you know what? No, I'm not really feeling it. The piggy dies. This new Des 1516 is sat on top of the ridgeline in front of us. I kind of wish I'd shot him rather than the 277. Not going to lie, tracked him in place. But, yeah, that was my mistake. So I'm going to pop down and pop a shot into this guy's lower plate. Well, no, I'm not because... The 1390 yellows into him and face hugs him, which is just the worst thing he could have done. It prevented me from getting a shot at him. I thank the Lord that he didn't die in front of that guy because that would have made this fight incredibly annoying. Now that 277 pulls out and I'm like, okay, no, that's not good. I managed to actually ricochet him off my upper plate again, which is which is something that this tank is really nice for when it's really well angled on the upper plate. The amount of times you do pull off ricochets is really good. Now, we've got the camo in here. He's at a distance where he can't quite see us. We managed to find the shell into his lower plate and finish him off. And I was thinking of going and charging this UDES here, but this IS-7 sort of dissuades me from doing that. We got a nice shot into his tracks, but unfortunately the IS-7 uses a repair kit and pulls back. And I'm thinking, I want to get rid of this UDES, because this UDES is the annoyance right now. That IS-7's that like, pulled into a place where I'm not going to be able to shoot him from that side. So what we're going to do, pull up on top of this ridge line, hopefully get a nice shot into the side of this Udes, which we do. And I, I kind of want to finish him off. I'm hoping I'll get to finish him off. There's a 430U, though, over there. It's like, well, you know what? Be rude not to shoot the tank with his ass hanging in the breeze. So we shoot him, and now we're going to drop low and hopefully finish this guy off. And we do. Now, that was kind of awkward because I wanted to... I actually stopped moving there, but the ridge line kept me sliding down. I wanted to aim that properly because the Udes' upper plate can ricochet shots like ridiculous amounts. It's not the most well-armoured tank, but those angles are crazy. And fortunately enough for me, it went to the lower plate. We get a nice roll there, 391 to finish off the 430U. We actually rolled for average. Mind blown. And we shut down that guy, and now there's just this G-Saw. I knew when I popped up on the top of the ridgeline and got spotted, I wanted this G-Saw to fire. I knew I was going to take a hit, I knew I was probably going to get penned, but I've got the health to take the shot, and I wanted him to fire, because once he fired, he'd get spotted, and we knew exactly where he was from that point. So now we're just chasing after him. Hopefully we'll get a shot into him to finish him off, to finish this great game off. And we do. We finish him off there. We end up with 5.3k damage, 6.5k assisted, and a really nice game for the 1-2-1. One, one. So we finished that game with 6 kills as well, so that was our top gun. Like I say, 5.3k damage, 6.5k assistance, that's like 11, nearly 12k combined. Ace tanker, top gun, 2.1k base XP, and a juicy game for what is a pretty damn solid tank. Would I say it's the top echelon of 450,000 free XP tier 10 tanks? Probably not. Not like a Chi Lin. But is it very solid tier 10 medium? Yes. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!